for the Michigan Wolverines. They have to make two changes, both at right back and left back, as Samantha DeVecchi will start and Skylar Anderson will start. We'll talk more about that a little later. Taking a look at the Penn State lineup, same as it has been, as they've won eight in a row with this lineup, looking good in their 4-3-3. And here we go. Delighted to be with you from your sack field. Such a great home to women's soccer. The Rutgers women's soccer team have been a staple, as well as the NWSL Sky Blue. Michigan in their whites as the number three seed, Penn State, the four seed in their blues. Alongside Illinois, outstanding central midfielder Jackie Manning, Dean Linky, delighted to be with you as we'll crown a champion here in Piscataway. Sam Coffey has been so good. I think Jackie Manny, this is just one man's opinion, I think one of the best players in the country as far as the overall package and tactical awareness. She really, I mean, in terms of her willingness and fearlessness to always want the ball in those big time situations in a game, I think she is unrivaled in the entire country, let alone just the Big Ten Conference. She has been outstanding this year and just so much fun to watch. She admitted to us yesterday that when she was at Boston College, a place that she still is connected with her teammates, no hard feelings, she just was, it was about growth, the reason she entered the transfer portal. And she admitted she used to get caught up in numbers and how many goals she scored, how many accolades. She said there's no real extra motivation that Sarah Stratagakis won Big Ten Mid for the year this shot is way too high. But for her, it's about continuing to go with the winning formula as they won eight in a row. And she said that she was proud of that maturation, that she's not worried about awards anymore. She's worried about the team. No, I think she's got such a bigger role here in terms of just getting this team going on and off the field, leadership wise, and just playmaking. She is all over the field and her movements in games are so fun to watch. You'll see her pull out left, pull out right. She'll go up into the attack. She is all over the field. Penn State, Schlegel, that swagger, sat out the entire year last year as this one comes all the way through. You think about Schlegel, she missed her junior year of high school tearing her ACL. And then the day before the start of last season, she tore her other knee. So both knees, two ACLs. She had to miss the entire season but she stayed engaged. She credits Andra Thomas, the trainer, for really working with her every day to be ready for this year. And what a year she's had, scoring her 12th goal on Friday, which leads the Big Ten, the Big Ten Freshman of the Year, just one behind the Big Ten Forward of the Year from, one ahead now, the Big Ten Forward of the Year from Wisconsin, Danny Rhodes. Throw in for Suero, and there is Schlegel. She's another one, too, who has all the ability in terms of her technique and, and whatnot to be a soccer player, but her mentality, and she just has this confidence about her, and she's young, which is so impressive, too, but she just kind of has, you mentioned it, that swagger about how she goes about things, and I think it makes her so different. Picked up in the midfield here by Corey Dyke. It was Emily Ogle's team last year as far as that all-important 6-8 pivot. Back across, in front, and the shot turning at the top of the six, just a little bit too high as Linehan, dangerous here to start. Talia Ferry gets this ball out wide, finds Linehan at the PK spot. Touch just gets a little bit too far, like you said, and can't quite get her footing to get this ball on frame. Peyton Linehan, part of that Great freshman class here for Penn State that now includes Schlego as a redshirt freshman. Schlego with those 12 goals and four assists. Linehan, five goals and one assist. Coffey, seven goals, eight assists. Abello, seven goals, three assists. And then you also have, frankly, Talia Ferry, four goals, nine assists, giving Erica Dombach all kinds of weapons. 13 amazing seasons. And you think about these last five years for the last five, they've been in the Big Ten Tournament final game. Kaylee Real and Ellie Jean have played in the Big Ten Tournament final game all four times because the one year they weren't here, they were out 
as part of the U-20 World Cup team. Yeah, they redshirted that year. And, I mean, just talk about the consistency of this program. It's been incredible to watch how great this program is year after year. The turnover, turnover of their players year after year. I mean, talk about Emily Ogle and her ability in that midfield role. And then next season, Corey Dyke steps in, and they don't really skip a beat. Their ability to turn players over and create is, is pretty incredible. Off of Danielle Wolf, there's Ellie Jean as Kaylee Rio leads all of the NCAA with 90, now 98 career games played, and Ellie Jean is just one behind at 97. And in the 54th minute today, Kaylee Rio will become the all-time minutes leader in the of NCAA Division I women's soccer, and that's real. That had it a moment ago. She's been another one for Penn State that's just been so dominant, so composed. She's got that quiet demeanor about her, but she just gets the job done in that back line. Another one, though, on the other side is Aaliyah Martin. I thought she was fantastic against Rutgers on Friday. Michigan. On the left side, sent back across with the right foot. No problem for Amanda Dennis. Saw Amanda this morning at the team hotel and she did confirm she was actually 14 years old in San Diego when Penn State was in the College Cup, drawn to their fans. A few weeks later, she was at the ID camp and committed as a youngster. Knew she was going to Penn State well before her junior and senior year. And she has been a rock in goal. Ellie Jean, one game less than Kaylee Real. What a combo as she throws it into Real. Got a whistle here first. Fourth official. The referee, I'm not sure if he got rid of the stuff that marks for free kicks or what was going on there. <laughs> Quick little pass here, Michigan in combination. With Hawkinson, had it for a moment. Hawkinson, ton of physical battles in that all out. It, it truly was, and I know it's an overused expression, but I mean, it was just an all out battle against the host Rutgers, that late goal and then into overtime. And neither team put their foot off the pedal. I mean, all game long, there was battle after battle. It was pretty exciting to watch, to say the least. Congratulations to Mike O'Neill on an outstanding season, their best in Big Ten regular season play. A year when Wisconsin Badgers are 10-0-1. Their only three losses are to UCLA, Florida State, and then a Purdue team that played two games in 11 days versus a Wisconsin team that played four games in 11 days, which makes a difference. Right at the top of the 18, one bounce, and it's right to Dennis as Raleigh Lofman, the sophomore from San Diego, shooting at the goalkeeper from San Diego and Amanda Dennis. Lofman finds this ball, it gets slipped through, but what fancy little footwork from Hernandez on the left side. This ball comes through Dyke and Real, and then Lofman tries to get on that with her left foot, can't quite get enough behind it. Hawkinson. One of our first questions for Jennifer Klein after the game, is that how Hawkinson always plays? And she says, yes, and I love it. You always got to have a player with a bite. You need that bulldog mentality, and Hawkinson brings it. Cross sent in, there is Hawkinson, top of her head, and she'll chase it down. Gets it over to Skylar Anderson. Skylar Anderson. And Skylar Anderson, a little bit of trouble there for Dennis as it falls down. Ball gets out here by Anderson. She gets it up towards the goal. Dennis has to knock this off the crossbar. And then Hernandez finds the rebound, tries to get on it, but gets too much underneath it, sends it over. Skylar Anderson trying to do her best Jade Rivera impersonation right there. We'll have more on that. The talented outside back who represented and played for Canada in the most recent World Cup with the full national team. The hero in the game against Rutgers 
but not available today. We'll show you why in just a little bit as Michigan still trying to get it on top of the six here. Let's see if they can. Stays on the ground and cleared out by Penn State. So here is the goal and then the celebration which caused the injury. Rivera, who had the win at her back, decides to go on goal here, gets it up and over McClellan for that big game winner. But then on the celebration, gets knocked in the head and finds herself out for the big game today. I give Jennifer Klein all kinds of credit, though, in talking about it. First of all, she said she's going to be okay. It's about concussion protocol. But she also said, as it was a backup goalkeeper that hit her in the head on the celebration, she's now requiring all goalkeepers to wear knee pads. <laughs> and she obviously said it in fun. Her point was, Jade's going to be all right. They're just being safe here. And that's a key, as you know, Jackie, with concussion protocol in college and all sports. They make sure that everybody's OK as Penn State looking for the first goal. But because Jade's going to be OK, I thought Jennifer Klein's approach is the same way they've been all season. Loose, ready for whatever is in front of them. You can see from the bench today of Michigan, they are bringing the energy on this side. There is Jennifer Klein. So without both outside backs, to a player, though, when they talk about a player that is always positive, always smiling, always inspirational, they all say Skylar Anderson. So the fact that she gets this opportunity on this enormous stage is another part of the reason why Jennifer Klein was able to roll with it. And she feels like it's meant to be as Janice Joyner is still out with a stomach illness. We witnessed that in that semifinal game on Friday. She had to leave in the first half. You could see her about ready to get sick. Earlier in the season against Washington State, she actually got sick as soon as she got off the field. This time around, it wasn't like she was actually throwing up or anything, but she is not well. Her equilibrium is not good, so she's not going to play either. So there we go. You deal with the cards that you're dealt, and you roll on was Jennifer Klein's approach as Penn State wins it out of the back. Coffee directing traffic. It is worth mentioning, as you think about injuries, Christian Schnur and Shea Moyer, both surefire starters, have also been out all season. They didn't play a game, and Erica Dombach had some to make some adjustments. One of those adjustments was sitting down with Frankie Taliaferri and, of course, Sam Coffey to say, hey, we got to move some things around, Sam. I know you were sitting right behind the forwards at Boston College, but you're going to have to play deeper without Moyer, and Sam Coffey was ready for it, Jackie. She was, and what an adjustment that turned out to be because she has been so good for this Penn State team. Real drops it back to Dyke. Played forward. And ready for it was DeVecchi. So DeVecchi is the other player that gets an opportunity. Obviously, she played a ton as well because when Joyner went out, DeVecchi went in, but now DeVecchi stays in. And with the injury to Rivera, we also see Anderson. There's Shepard who looked like a center forward. We talked to her yesterday and she said she's been so close all season long and in practice she scores like crazy. So she kind of felt like a goal was coming and indeed it did. Penn State wins it back in midfield. Here's Jean. Ellie Jean, such a weapon going forward from that left back position. Talia Ferry, Talia Ferry, all Big Ten player. Takes a shot, one bounce, one scoop. And there is U.S. Youth International Hillary Abio as Talia Ferry with the shot. Talia Ferry ends up getting this off of her foot. Comes in, drives with her right, and then tries to get this on goal. Beal, though, with the stop. Penn State's just getting a little bit too narrow in their attack. You've seen Sam Coffey, Talia Ferry, and Schlegel all coming right up that middle spot. I think if they can start to get Ellie Jean, Abello, we haven't seen her on the ball really. Peyton Linehan in that outside wide space. They'll be able to break down this Michigan defense a little bit more. Here's this foul. Coffey gets up and in right into Sealy's 
Right thigh, it looked like. Penn State. Erica Dombach talking about setting the tempo. She was really pleased with the tempo they set against Purdue, particularly in that second half when they got both goals, the second coming off a penalty kick. She wanted to try to control the tempo, but she also said, and she said it again on the field right before this game, she's like, I really like this Michigan team. I like what Jennifer Klein has done. I like the decision to bring Martin back as Martin was a midfielder and a forward, the sister of Riley Martin, who scored a ton of goals at Michigan. Martin at center back, first team all Big Ten. We mentioned it before, but I thought she was instrumental in that game against Rutgers. She did so well to deal with Amira Ali. Moneme, for the most part, I thought she was fantastic. Kaylee Rio, all 10 field players pass midfield for Penn State. Guy, Bello, guy. turn, shot by Talia Ferry from distance. Guy. I like this little sequence because Ellie Jean gets out, Abello gets to come in, she finds Talia Ferry in that open space because Michigan got stretched, and then that shot on goal goes just wide. Frankie Talia Ferry. Combination with coffee and then Schlego up top. A lot of firepower up there for Penn State. Indeed. Flick by Michigan. Bello. Came to Penn State thinking she was probably going to play left back, but said she's enjoying playing left forward a lot more. Bello drives it in. Top of the 18. Coffee takes her time. Sam Coffey, Talia Ferry, far side, Linehan, and the shield will go out of bounds. I love this little individual attack by Abello. Puts it on one side, runs past the other, gets on the end of it, and then some more fancy footwork to get herself end line and a great service into the box. Sam Coffey takes this down brilliantly, and then Talia Ferry tries to get this over to the other side of the six, but goes out for that goal kick. 28 minutes remaining here in the first half. Penn State lost to Michigan to start the Big Ten season in Happy Valley, University Park, Jeffrey Field, Michigan with that one nothing win. The Michigan beat Ohio State. A few days later, I was in Jennifer Klein's office and she talked about setting the tone. When we asked about it this uh, yesterday, Saturday, about that rematch, she said again, it set the tone for the entire season. The team believed they could be here after that, and sure enough, they are here, and the rematch is on with a Big Ten tournament title on the line. Rio, pass midfield. Gene Bello shows. Swero finds Dyke. Dyke taken away by Michigan. Play it in the midfield. Seeley. Again, Michigan in white, Penn State in blue. Taken away by Schlegel, and Schlegel pushed to the ground, but referee said no harm, no foul, no whistle. Kept playing, Hawkinson. Hawkinson did get a yellow card in that physical matchup against Rutgers. She was not backing down <laughs> at any moment. Ball picked up by Michigan. See, it does look like right now Penn State's keeping a close eye on Sarah Stratagakis. So that matchup of the midfield that we started the show with is going to be key. Good extra pass from Michigan allows this service in. Hawkinson, at the top of her head, and it'll roll out of bounds and come back to Penn State. Here's Stratagakis on that left side, gets it on her right, looks for that service in the box to Hawkinson, and just a little bit too much on it. 
think both teams, though, right now are doing a really good job, given that it's a championship tournament. Nerves are high. Energy is high. You typically see kind of an up and down game in the first 20 or so. But I think both these teams are doing a good job of putting their foot on the ball, keeping it, building their possession, getting numbers forward. It's been a really pretty soccer game so far. Jennifer Klein, second season as Michigan head coach, 24-13 and two. You talk about her growth. Got to remember, she went at the time when she took over UNLV. She was the youngest head coach in Division One history. She had two years there. UNLV wanted her back, but she did a little bit self-evaluation, a little bit of self-evaluation, and said, "You know what? I still need to grow. I don't know everything. I'm not prepared for this." So Kadani McAlpine reached out at USC, and if you meet Kadani McAlpine, you know he's one of the top coaches in the game, and said, come join me as associate head coach. That's what she did. She left a head coaching job to go to USC, walked away with a national championship, and four years later, she said, you know what, I'm ready to do it again. Right opportunity. Michigan was the right opportunity for her, and what a job she's done. Really, I mean, this is her second year, and you can just feel the belief in the culture that she's setting up for this Michigan side. We haven't seen them put back-to-back -back seasons, good back-to-back -back seasons together in quite a while, and you can just see the confidence, the belief in the culture that they've grown here. I'm excited to see what she does with this program. Michigan getting around coffee. So far, we have not said Sarah Stratagakis' name. We said her name a ton on Friday. Schlegel, as Linehan may have been offside if she was able to get to the ball anyway. So Michigan going the other way. I, I can't pick a favorite right now in this one based on what we've seen so far. What do you think? Jackie, it's been fairly even. No, I think they've kind of both had their moments. Like we talked about, it was a little bit up and back in the beginning, nerves settled down, and I think both teams have shown that they're able to possess the ball, slowly build their attack. I think both teams, because of that, are kind of respecting each other. We haven't seen a really high press system out of both of these teams yet. I think it's gonna be a great game. Sura Yeka looking to check in and will be the first sub for Michigan as she is planning to come on for Danielle Wolf, the forward. So as we just talked about, Yeka coming in now, and Danielle Wolf will come off. I'm gonna push Nikki Hernandez up into that 10 spot. And Sarah Stratagakis is going up into the nine. I like that adjustment, right? And I, that's great coaching because, as we just said, we have not mentioned Stratagas, Stratadaka's name, and now she's going to play the center forward. I think it's, like we talked about, that battle in the midfield is going to be hard. Penn State is loaded with people in that midfield space. So here's Yeka, just off the bench. Stratagakis makes the run. And Yeka, not sure if that was a shot or a pass. Either way, it'll come back to Amanda Dennis. Big 10 midfielder of the year, Sarah Stratagakis, who at 16 years old actually made an appearance for the Canada full national team. In one year, she played in the U17 and U20 World Cups in the same year, got that cap, and really since then has not been back as it's been her teammate, Jade Revere, who made the Canada World Cup team. We asked Jennifer Klein if Canada is still expressing interest and essentially they're keeping an eye on her, but I feel like Stratagakis, if she keeps playing the way she's been, she'll get another chance. Canada is all about kind of developing that younger talent and I think she'd be perfect in that system. Shepard, the goal scorer, plays it forward. Calling for it again is Seeley, who took that first pass from Shepard. Yeka, drop it all the way back. Leah Martin, who had played midfield and forward her first two years. Jennifer Klein moving her to center back this year. Couple touches, Nikki Hernandez, and now a whistle. I 
Dante Hernandez comes into the space and it pops up off of her thigh into her right hand. A little bit of a delayed call. Stratagakis, little turnover, attacking. Stratagakis, goalkeeper is out. Dennis will punch it over. Sarah Stratagakis, Jennifer Klein moves her to forward. She picks it off. Dennis off her line, and Jennifer Klein likes it. Penn State looked to go quick here. Hayslip, too big of a touch, and Stratagakis gets that ball, gets her head up, knows Dennis is far off of her line, so tries to go up and over. Dennis with a straight sprint back and then parries that ball up and over. Great recovery by Dennis. Sarah Stratagakis, six goals and 11 assists. Big Ten Midfielder of the Year, can also play a little center forward. We've seen that. <laughs> that kind of reflects what we talked about earlier. I mean, these are two big time coaches. Jennifer Klein, not getting any touches for Stratagakis, decides to make the change early, and Stratagakis almost with the first goal. Amanda Dennis, big time to get back and knock it over. Suryaka down near the end line. A little tangle up, calling for the corner kick. They'll say no off Michigan and back to Penn State. And we'll see if they switch, but you've also got Ali Schlegel right now coming back in towards that 10 spot. And Peyton Linehan going up with Frankie Taliaferri going into that wide spot for Penn State. So some different, a little bit of a chess game right now for both teams, trying to find what works best for them in these systems. Lego, Natalia Ferry, now Coffee. she can handle anything. Jean, Abello right back to Jean. Hawkinson closing down, Jean squares it, all white jerseys, Michigan clears. Kaylee Real. Now we're starting to see some of that Physical one-on-one -on -one defending that both teams brought on Friday. Shepard, Hawkinson, bottom of her foot, taken away by Abello. Abello, second team all Big Ten. Big swing there from Talia Ferry. Great sliding tackle by Hawkinson who comes up limping. Hawkinson, a midfielder, all the way back doing the defensive work. Now Stratagakis, Michigan. They believe, doesn't matter who's out there, left back, no. Nope. Out, no problem. Right back, out, no problem. They're still ready to roll. Seeley was calling for it. They'll switch it far side as they were looking for Skylar Anderson making that run. Gene will bring it all the way back. Caitlin Hayslip. Hawkinson, I do believe, that was down. She, I'm not surprised. She was battling so hard on Friday. I don't even know how she can walk two days later. And she got involved and had that big tackle just a second ago. And when she got up, she was limpy. What a tackle that was. Coffee came in hard on this ball with her left foot, tries to one time it. Hawkinson drops to ground, gets all ball, gets up. But then you saw just a clip of that ankle. But what a huge tackle. Let's give you a little glimpse of how great she was one-on-one -on, -one on Friday against Rutgers. She talked about the physical battles that she had and all day long, her and Tierney Wiltshire on this flank side just went at it. It was quite the battle to watch. Both of them coming in strong, trying to make things happen. It was just a game where you could feel the energy and intensity throughout everybody. Hawkinson did earn a yellow card. And again, Jennifer Klein was okay with that as well. Sometimes that's just part of the game. Tactical fouls and also going back to her comments about that bite. You had a little bite in the midfield, right, Jackie? <laughs> <laughs> I did, I think. <laughs> I like to think I did. Slipping on 
The kick right there was Dennis. And Michigan wins it back, Hernandez. Set in, looking for Suryaka, no problem for Amanda Dennis. If you missed Friday semifinals at the first game time, which is 11 a.m., it was 39 degrees, but the wind was blowing and both coaches telling us that it felt like below 30, we were saying low 30s, but below 30 on the field today, Minimal wind, sun is out, and all things considered, it's balmy out there. It's a perfect day for a championship game. It is beautiful. Much less wind, sun's out. Here's Jean. Jean. Denied there by Suri Yucca, and it will be a corner kick. Corner kick, Penn State. Holly Ferry finds Jean in the wide space. I wish Jean would have gone a little bit more. She gets it here, tries to hold up instead of going end line. Michigan was really well set in terms of their recovery. I think Jean just needs to get end line, drive that ball back across because Penn State's box organization is so good. One corner apiece. Coffee takes the corners from both sides for Penn State. Too far post. It'll fall. Knocked away there by Beal. Cleared out. That was Kaylee Real, the defender, trying to get involved on a day where she'll break the record for most minutes played. Last year's Big Ten Defender of the Year, Kaylee Real. I love watching her play. You can just see her kind of quietly organizing everything on the field here. She's in the box off this corner, takes a perfect touchdown, and just can't quite get her feet set to get some power behind that ball. But a big stop by Hillary Beal from Michigan. All right, we've got two subs coming on for Erica Dombach. Jordan Caniff, who had the assist on the first goal against Purdue, is coming in for Ali Schlegel. And then also coming in, Rachel Wasserman will replace Peyton Linehan. So Wasserman into the game, as well as Jordan Caniff. It'll be a throw in, flip throw style, Michigan. That's Penn State, rather, cleared by Michigan. Anytime you can throw a little flip throw into the action, you'll take it as Bello with the flip throw. I think she must have slipped a little bit because her ball will typically go all the way in the back post. You see her line up here. Ball goes on the ground and it's just that flip throw. But like I said, typically her flip throw will go in towards the back of the six. It's just like a corner kick. Yeah, the defender was trying to knock it away as Coffey running downhill. Coffey takes a shot. Can't get it on frame, hit it well. And Hillary Beal will take her time. Wasserman sets this up. Great tackle and win. And then Coffey tries to go at her 1v1. Comes out wide under her left foot and can't get that ball on frame. And also well defended by Aaliyah Martin there. Trying to cut that angle in towards the back post. Hanging around the midfield. Picked up by Raleigh Lofman. Who I think is so critical to what Michigan does too. I mean, she'll just sit in that space right in front of the back line and she just connects. She moves the ball around, so switch the point of attack. She's pretty big time in that midfield role, I think. Incredibly technical and good on the ball too. Michigan showing some patience here. Hernandez can't get to it. Penn State going the other way. Great tackle, middle of the field. Jackie Manny just mentioned the importance of Raleigh Lofman. What a tackle that is. Jean trying to push it forward to Wasserman. Shepard's got it. She'll bring it all the way back to Hillary Beal. Shepard telling us yesterday that defensively, 
They have so much confidence in Hillary Beal that it allows them to just do their job. But then she also said kind of what you just talked about in Lofman, the two holding mids that sit in front. She feels like that wall of seven, including Beal, they're all together. They definitely all on the same page no matter who's in there, and it's working. This shot over to Yekka. Sent back in, Dennis barking out orders. Telling Penn State away, and finally they do clear it. Looking to find Wasserman, one back by Michigan. Bello brings it back to Gene, now Coffee. Penn State, Hayslip, rather than Connecting the dots out of the back decides to go long, but at the moment you just have Wasserman up there kind of as a lonely soldier. Penn State's kind of been pinned a little bit by this Michigan side. Like you talked about, they've just Michigan has those two that sit in front of the back line between Sealy and Lofton, and they do such a good job of taking away any passing angles. I think that's why you've seen some of the changes that we saw between Schlegel and Talia Ferry going out wide. I think it's just easier to get the ball because of how good those two do at screening that line. What a touch from Gene taking that Abello pass, looking for Wasserman. And back by Hayslip. Now right down the middle, Lofman. Yekka. Calling for it is Seeley. Now Lofman will switch the point of the tack over to Anderson. Back to Lofman. Shepard. Scored the first goal against Rutgers. And her teammate Jade Rivera with the winner in overtime after Tierney Wiltshire tied it in the 89th minute. Take a look back at Friday's games at halftime. Stay with us here on the Big Ten Network. Championship Sunday. Bello tries to do this again, the little body meg. Touches it one way, tries to get around the other, but Anderson does a great job to step in front and make her go through the back for the foul. There's Carrie Abello. She's got a big time athletic family. Her sister, Stephanie Abello, left-handed catcher for the Illini, just graduated, played for Tyra Perry. That is Jackie Manny's alma mater. And her sister, Stephanie Abello, is the all-time home run leader in high school for the state of Illinois as they're keeping it in the Big Ten family. I loved calling games with Stephanie Abello, left-handed catcher with a cannon. She, she actually had labrum issues, which affected her last year. And Stephanie Abello... Big time player for the Lion Eye, flying in last night to be here today. Lofman over the top, looking for Stratagakis, who, right when Jennifer Klein switched her to the nine, was able to pick a ball off, and Dennis was way off her line and had to clean it up. Just got lucky to get a paw on it to knock it over. Otherwise, it'd be one to nothing in favor of Michigan. Swirls got Dennis. Dennis will slide over to take care of it. There's eight minutes remaining here in this first half. And I think it's fair to say, as we talked about Jennifer Klein's approach to having a couple injuries, just keeping it loose. Next player up, ready to go. I don't think there's been a big difference as far as the outside back play for the Michigan Wolverines. No, oh, I agree. I think both have been fantastic. I think it's been a great soccer match so far. I love how these two teams possess. I think the only thing lacking is some final third play. A little bit of sophistication in the final third between both these teams hasn't really been there today. G 
Gene. Gene reminds me so much of former Texas Tech superstar and one of the left best left backs at the next level, Jaylene Hinkle. Just the way she makes the game look so easy and smooth and can come forward, serves great balls. She's got a bright future for sure. Here's Stratagakis, touches it into space. Michigan, little chip. It'll be hard to get one by Dennis. This ball gets out here by Anderson. Come across that left side. Little one-two combination playing a perfectly weighted ball in to Devecki's run by Stratagakis. Just can't get it on frame. Can't Kelly Jean reminds me more of uh, Casey Short, by the way. Oh, there you Red go. Stars. <laughs> <laughs> They're both pretty good outside backs, though, right? <laughs> Yeah, I, I'll agree with that as well. Absolutely. By the way, it's sub for Penn State. Maddie Myers has come on for a bellow. She wears number 10. So Myers will get a run here for the final six minutes and change. Still no score. Big 10 tournament championship game. Your sack field, Piscataway, New Jersey, Rutgers University. And I will say this. It's a nice crowd here again today. We weren't so sure after Michael Neal's team was knocked out of it. The crowd on Friday for the Rutgers game, it was electric. There were several thousand here. It was awesome, right? Ooh, I mean, the energy behind that crowd was pretty impressive. And like you talked about, I mean, at that point when Rutgers saluted their fans, it was such a cool moment. So Myers making the run, knocked out of bounds by Michigan. Michigan, your three seed. Penn State, your four seed. Both these teams, win or lose, will be in the NCAA tournament. So not a situation like last year when Stephanie Golan's team has the seventh seed. They knew they had to win the Big Ten tournament, and they did in PKs over this Penn State team. Not the case this year. Both these teams, their RPIs are great. Their strength of schedule is great. Their records are great. They're going to be in the tournament now. It's about their seed. Penn State thinking perhaps a four seed, maybe a five seed. I feel like for Erica Dombach, I loved her answer. She's like, you know what? I really don't care about our seeds. Some, in fact, sometimes I don't really want a four seed because then you're in the same side as the number one seed. Just get me in there and then let us go from there. And this is a dangerous team if they get in. Erica Dombach, her approach to the game and even the, the part that you love, Jackie, the psychology of the game, she's all about it. I, I, every time we talk to her, they talk about kind of their preparation and how much they do with a sports psychologist. And we even talked to her about it before this game. And I just think it's so interesting how much emphasis they put on the sports psych part of it. I think when you look at it, I mean, everybody prepares physically. Not everybody prepares mentally. And I think that side is just as important. And I love how much Penn State does with it. Well, that was another reason why Sam Coffey decided to come here about her growth on and off the field and Erica Dombach's approach to the game. That is why she is wearing the blue and white for Penn State is. See here, looks like got clipped pretty good here. Suero comes in, doesn't get clipped, but Atterbury comes on top and lands on Suero's foot and you see that ankle roll to the outside. Atterbury, the sophomore from Gilbert, Arizona, Hamilton High School. Has, this is only her ninth game, so it doesn't play a ton. And yeah, she definitely got hit right there. And we need to remind you that Hawkinson also went to the bench with an injury. Under three minutes remaining here. In the first half, stay with us at halftime. We'll remind you about all the Big Ten awards. Some great players, big time coach. And we'll also flash back to Friday's exciting action. Penn State knocking off a very game Purdue team. Congratulations to Drew Roth, that young team, which is gonna be dangerous coming forward. You think about Purdue, Ohio State, Northwestern, so young, they don't lose very much at all, those three teams. They're going to be locked and loaded. 
for next year. Minnesota Golden Gophers, another one of those teams. And I think if anything, this year told us how the parity of the league is just getting better and better. There was a ton of excitement, a little bit of drama towards the end to see who is going to get into that eighth seed. But it's going to be fun in these next couple of years as these programs and these youth start to develop. Penn State wins it in the midfield. Talia Ferry, she's got a different kind of engine, folks. And she'll bring it back here to Jean. Jean. Jean, one more touch. Looking for a handball, won't get it, as it is cleared neatly there by Aaliyah Martin and going the other way. Aaliyah Martin, who came to Michigan primarily because her sister was also there. Sister Riley Martin finished her career with 21 goals and 24 assists and has stayed around in Ann Arbor considering some postgraduate work. Loffman. Nikki Hernandez and Stratagakis starting to look like those two are both playing as center forwards. Suryeka. Tough ball to handle there for Skylar Anderson, but Yeka is there to handle it. Martin with just one minute remaining. We'll get it to Lofman. Hernandez and Stratagakis just at the top of the 18. They'll spread it wide. Set in, looking for Stratagakis. Dennis gets her hand on it. Clearance by Coffey. One back by Seeley. Michigan still has time to get a shot off. Finally cleared there by Penn State. Picked back up by Shepard. Skylar Anderson, now Suri Yeka. Yeka with her left foot, top of the 18. 20 seconds remaining, and Penn State looks like they're going to be content to run this out. We'll see what kind of adjustments both teams make. Hey. Michigan's attack Nine. down this left flank. Devecki with a good ball Six. in, and then Five. Dennis came out Four. a little bit too much, Three. but corrected her error, got that ball up and One. out. Coffee and Talia Ferry take care of it the rest of the way, but I thought Michigan, towards the end of that half, established themselves offensively. Yeah, they really did. Great point, Jackie. See Amanda Dennis there. Michigan, the three seed. Penn State, the four seed. And we are joined by Coach Jennifer Klein in her second season with Michigan. And Coach, obviously both teams spent a lot of energy on Friday, still kind of trying to figure things out. Your thoughts on the first 45? I think a great 45 minutes. I mean, both teams, uh, I think it's just a, a great game of soccer and it, it's exciting. Uh, you can't ask for anything better in a championship. What did you like about Hernandez shifting into that nine role offensively? I think, you know, one of the biggest things that she did for us was just her defensive presence. I think she helped with some of uh, some rotations that we were having a little bit difficult time early on. But because of her defensive presence, she's creating some turnovers, which is allowing for us to get going into the attack a bit higher up the field. Coach, your team is so much fun to watch. Good luck in the second half. Thanks for being with us. Thank you guys very much. Jennifer Klein, a breath of fresh air for the Michigan Wolverines. They had a good time on Friday, so did Penn State. No score, though, through 45. Penn State of Michigan on BTN. Halftime of the Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament Championship game. Penn State and Michigan. Penn State going for their eighth Big Ten Tournament title. And we're pleased to be joined by their excellent head coach, Erica Dombach. And Erica, the stat line the same, the zeros the same. Your message to your team here as you start the second half. Well, we've got to push here. I think both teams obviously are a little bit fatigued from Friday, and you can see that. Um, but we've got to push through it. We've had plenty of Friday, Sunday weekends. We've performed well on Sundays. Um, and there's times where we can conserve a little energy and keep the ball. Um, but right now, we've got to get in the space behind them. Um, we've got the we've got the uh, the players to do it. Uh, but we've got to push. I think we're waiting for this game to come to us. And uh, and this is a good Michigan team that's been nice and dangerous in the first half. We're going to have to be better. Thought it was a little bit of a chess match with some position changes. What did you like about the Talia Ferry Schlegel Linehan switch? Yeah, they were uh, getting in the space in front of our outside backs a bit, so we wanted to solidify that space um, and uh, and see if we could figure out some different 
<laughs> different uh, chess pieces. Um, and nothing worked yet, but we'll see what we can come up with in the second half. Coach, you've got perhaps the hottest team in the country. Thanks so much for being with us. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. And this is good to see Meredith Hawkinson, the super sophomore from Maple Grove, Minnesota, getting back into the game as Meredith's got a brother, Luke, that played four years at Creighton University and was a pretty regular player and has another brother. And she said that's what makes her so tough. She grew up playing one-on-one, -on -one, whether it was soccer or basketball or whatever, with her two brothers, including one who was a really good player at Creighton. His season ended on Friday as they lost to Butler. But Meredith, not the only Hawkinson getting it done in college soccer. Her brother is pretty good for Creighton. Coach Torres. Suero. Jackie, it's great to see Hawkinson back out there because when you think about both the outside backs, and I get Jennifer Klein is loose and happy, but I mean, at some point, you need your players back in there. So good, it's so good to see Hawkinson back in there. No, that would have been a pretty big blow to this Michigan side, especially because like we've talked about, she just brings that intensity. She brings that bite to this Michigan team. I thought Erica Dombach was on point. I thought fatigue was part of that first half. It was even, but it wasn't exactly electrifying. You saw Stratagakis make that run. You saw Coffee make a really good run, but it wasn't like barn burner the way it was on Friday. And now it's a matter of, as she said, hey, it's not the first time we've done this. We know what it's like. We've been pretty good on Sunday, so now they got to bring it. No, it's kind of that gut check time. It's just talked about it. It's a quick turnover when you go Friday to Sunday, and especially when you've got all the adrenaline that you do in a championship game. But she said it. You just have to find a way to get it done. And this team has done that before. Both these teams have done that. But I, I agree 100% because these teams are two that like to high press. That's when they're at their best. And we didn't see a ton of that. At some point in the first half, they kind of built their way into it. But usually these teams are go, go, go. And I think that fatigue is absolutely a factor today. So we'll see what Hawkinson can do. She's on it there. Hawkinson, not once but twice, was named the Minnesota High School Player of the Year. And she spent time with the Minnesota Thunder Academy. Here's Stratagakis. Stratagakis, Big Ten Midfielder of the Year against last year's Big Ten Defender of the Year, Rio. Now Hawkinson. Marked by Gene, and Gene will take it away. Seely. Seely probably doesn't get enough recognition for the job she does as well in front of that back line. She does it. We call it, and I played that position, so I know it well, but we call them the stepchildren of the team because <laughs> they just don't quite get the recognition and they have to do all the dirty work. We will never call you a stepchild of anything, <laughs> Jackie. I promise you that. <laughs> Left side, you're too important to the operation. Here's DeBecky. DeBecky. Back in, it'll roll out of bounds and come back to Amanda Dennis and Penn State. Alongside the great Illinois' Jackie Manning, I'm Dean Linky. So thrilled to be with you here on Championship Sunday. A busy day on the Big Ten Network, including some men's soccer a little later on. Michigan and Michigan State will have some action. Looking forward to watching that one. Sitting back and enjoying BTN. I like my everyday routine, Jackie. I love VTN. Great to be here with everybody. Your sack field, Piscataway, particularly as Jackie said, on a beautiful day, all things considered. It's ideal. It really, I mean, when I think back to some of the Big Ten tournament games that I've played in, this is by far one of the best ones, I think. Staying in the game for Michigan, Sammy Atterbury. East Joiner out with an illness and Jade Rivera out with concussion protocol. So both outside backs and we've seen some adjustments on the fly. And that mid 
matchup of Sarah Stratagakis and Sam Coffey I thought was a good play. As you take a look at the highlights, both those players featured in two of the most dangerous opportunities. And they kind of play the same role for each team. You know, they sit in pockets, they'll get the ball. They love to have the ball at their feet and turn up and go at you and break lines. Here comes Michigan. Shepard started this attack. Now Atterbury back across. She's made that long run wearing 23, but it was Shepard, the center back, who is starting to feel like a center forward after scoring that brilliant goal against Rutgers, making the long run. Shepard gets on this ball on the right side, finds Hernandez in the middle, who gets us on her left. A little bit of a ball into Atterbury's run. We can't make anything of it. Shot from distance. Sydney Shepard, she grew up in the Bay Area of California, but she was a Michigan girl at birth. Why? Well, her dad is Dr. Sydney Autumn Shepard. He got his undergrad, he got his master's, he got his PhD, and he's a nuclear physicist, which is what he majored in in Michigan. She said she knew the fight song for Michigan every word before she was five years old. There was no doubt that she was going to go back to Michigan just based on, as we've got another player down here, the fight song every single day by the way his dad originally from detroit michigan so they had the ties so she and her twin brother britain are both at michigan as you see another player back up there caitlin hayslip a little bit of tangle up shepherd though singing the michigan fight song since he was five as you see the injury right here hayslip great job to step around and Get this ball before Stratagakis. Can't tell what the injury was, but looks up, looks to be up and moving again. Good pass over. Hernandez drops it. Suero got enough of a shoulder there on Stratagakis to slow her down. And now Dennis, there's Dennis. See, Dennis knows what she's doing right there, giving a high five there to Suero because it was Suero's defending on Stratagakis. That stopped that nifty flick right there from Hernandez. Here's Shepard. We're almost at that 10 minute mark and I think Michigan has had the most of this second half so far. Hayslip. Push it out wide again to Laura Swero. Senior from Royalsford, Pennsylvania. And you're right, Michigan again attacking. Hernandez is in. Dennis just gets big, stays low, gets her arms down. And Hernandez, as you heard Jackie Manning talk about Hernandez moving to the nine. Lofman with that great defensive anticipation, finds Stratagakis, and then the perfectly weighted ball into Hernandez's run. On her left, Amanda Dennis gets herself big, stops that from the going in the back of the net. Well, that's Michigan at their best right there, isn't it? Quick passes, turn, transition, shot. But Dennis, big save in the first half, another save there as that shot our BTN crew, so awesome, says it all. Nikki Hernandez, the junior from Naperville, Illinois. Sammy Atterbury. Coffee. Sometimes you gotta go backwards to go forward as she brings it to real. Now Jean. Martin. Michigan wins it again. Michigan setting the tempo here in the second half. Trying to run it down is Atterbury. But that went out of bounds and the pressure from Atterbury will earn the throw in. Ball through by Lofman again. I think she's so instrumental in playing those balls in, winning balls when they're on the defense, quickly transitioning into their attack. I think she's been so big time for Michigan. 
That's Atterbury, but you're right, Lofman who gave her the pass. Second team, all Big Ten, truly does pull the strings as Lofman homeschooled from San Diego. Comes in with six goals and six assists. She actually played for the Argentina youth national team, but is still eligible to play for the U.S. team. And she played a ton of futsal at a high level, including futsal with U.S. soccer. And you're seeing some of those foot skills in the middle of the field. Great passing, good dribbling. Now you can see how comfortable and technical she is with the ball. If that's not enough, she also won a U.S. Congressional Award as all of these players representing the student part of the student athlete. There's Raleigh Lofman, sophomore from San Diego. Jean, just one less appearance all time than her teammate right next to her, Kaylee Rio. Hawkinson can't get it by Rio. Now Penn State will go the other way. Bellows back in there with her sister and parents watching on. Kelly Ferry, look at Michigan, just a little extra step here in the second half. They've had more of the play. I think even Erica Dombach, the head coach for Penn State, would agree. And Michigan has been in their attacking half almost this entire second half so far. You know, Dombach talked about them needing to just go get the game, but I think Michigan is finding something that's working right now. out of bounds. I love this hustle by Hernandez here. Watch her close this space on Talia Ferry and then turns wins and faces the game to transition quickly. Yeah, that is not a low-level player that they're ripping it away from. Talia Ferry has it ripped again. Playing like a boss is Hernandez just coming right back and saying, wait a second, that's mine and turning the other way. Michigan going to make some more moves here. Coming into the game, Emma Cooper, who played quality minutes. Good to see Sammy Atterbury make her ninth appearance. She was the number 17 forward nationally in the class of 2018, Atterbury. Had a good run there. Haven't seen a whole lot of her. But again, that reflects on Jennifer Klein's comments that our team is loose. They are ready. They, she talked a lot about having fun, and she said, you know, everybody wants to have fun in their job, but really the entire team has fun. They do a lot of practical jokes, and she admitted that even the coaches are not off the list for practical jokes. <laughs> they're, they're available and ready for it, and you can see the way this team plays. They play like they're having a good time, and they're fun to watch. All right, it's something that even... Mike O'Neill from Rutgers was talking to us about the same thing. They have to realize that you can have fun in this environment. If you don't, it just gets too stale. They play too hung up. Over the top of Stratagakis. Swear on. Nice angled ball to Talia Ferry. Talia Ferry, look at her getting rid of it quickly, knowing that Michigan's ready to pounce. And there's a collision. Hawkinson. Who got a yellow card on Friday right in the middle of it, and that's that bite. You know when you play against number seven, Meredith Hawkinson. As you see Brooke Seeley looking on. But it was Hawkinson involved in that collision. There's Jennifer Klein. Hawkinson gets the most of Corey Dyke right there. Dyke comes in, tries to get a toe on it, and then comes through, and it looks like she almost caught her in the side of the head. Talk about Warriors. Corey Dyke, freshman. Emily Ogle ran the show for so long, you wonder if she was ever going to leave. She was so good, now playing at the next level, and Erica Dombach saying the way that Dyke has taken over that role and looking like Emily Ogle, that is a... That's high praise from a great coach. Hernandez. Stratagakis. Stratagakis. 
She was looking like she was ready to slice and dice and deal a little bit. Michigan looking dangerous here in the second half. Little give and go. Hawkinson. Hawkinson. Cleared out of there. Shepard, little move and her shot too far. She was flying high yesterday after scoring that goal on Friday. Great win by Shepard. Gets it down, and then she's just too tight with her feet to be able to get this on frame. Almost would have been better off going with her left there, but came through big time for them on Friday. Why not try it again? Sydney Shepard. Michigan winning all those second balls, third balls, and when they're losing it, they're hustling back to win it back. I mean, they've absolutely dominated this second half. Penn State has not really been able to put together anything, let alone get into their attacking half. Buffin knocking away the pass from Coffey. Cleaned up here now, though. On it is Linehan. Now Gene. The thing about this Penn State team, though, they're so loaded with big-time stars like Michigan that have, in addition to their college experience, a lot of them have international experience, high-level academy experience. Penn State, they'll figure it out even if they can't come over and talk to Eric. They've got the players to figure it out. They play it into the gap, and there is Hillary Beal, who told us yesterday when we asked her, why did you pick Michigan. She was the number one goalkeeper, and her comment was, I wanted to go to a program that needed a turnaround to make a difference, to have an impact. And that's why Hillary Beal chose to be a Michigan Wolverine. As she's from Laguna Beach, California, that's pretty clean living out there in Orange County. <laughs> but she wanted to come to Michigan, a team that had had a few down years, and Hillary Beal is part of their resurgence. Another hard tackle as Hernandez goes down, gets right back up. Linehan has it, looking to play it into space. I don't think I've ever seen Sarah Stratagakis come out of a game and Stratagakis and Jennifer Klein. How about that right there? You saw her right away, like telling her, hang on, just want to talk to you a little bit, pat her on the back and tell her she's going to get right back in there. Great job by our crew to catch that moment right there because she didn't, normally doesn't come out of the game, Jackie. She doesn't. I think we saw them try to kind of shift things around in their attack a little bit to get things going in the first half. And I think with that intensity that we saw on Friday, it's just a quick little breather. She'll be back out there in no time, I'm sure. So with Stratagakis out, we'll see what kind of adjustments both teams make. Michigan without Stratagakis. Then also we'll see how Penn State attacks this Michigan team without the Big Ten midfielder of the year. It looks like Erica Dombach, when she can, will get Rachel Wasserman into the game. She also got Jordan Caniff in already. So Caniff in, Wasserman waiting to get in for Penn State. Shepard. Shepard in combination with Martin. Two confident center backs. Hawkinson. Hawkinson. Banged up in the first half, but out there to start the second half. Skylar Anderson. Lily Farkas is the player that replaced Stratagakis. And Farkas, a freshman from Kansas City, Missouri. And to Jennifer Klein's credit, she told us before Friday that maybe if you don't see Farkas on Friday, you will see her in the Big Ten tournament. She's Played some quality minutes, had quality practices, and she definitely gave us the heads up that we would see Farkas, and she's in there. 
did. And I mean, again, we talked about how physical that battle was against Rutgers. And I think just giving legs a little bit of a break. Second half, you can re-enter. So just as we're thinking about when Stratagakis will come back in and what kind of directive she's going to get, I also feel like here in the second half, part of the story is based on what we talked about to start, we haven't said Sam Coffey's name a whole lot here in the second half, Jackie. No, Michigan is doing a fantastic job of cutting off passing channels and really being good defensively in terms of their organization. They're compact in their line, but they're also doing it in a high press system that's making Penn State get stuck in their end. We just haven't seen Penn State really keep the ball in their attacking half. There is Sam Coffey, transfer from Boston College. First team all Big Ten. The Mac Herman Trophy watch list. Talia Ferry. Shepard. Good soft feet. And then the grit of Hawkinson. Hawkinson. Gene called for the foul. Hawkinson again, finding herself in a battle. And what a cheeky little touch. She tries to meg Jean. Jean, a little bit of a frustration foul right there. But again, Hawkinson, just all game long. Friday today, she has been so hard on those flank sides. Meredith Hawkinson, second team, all Big Ten. Told you about her brother playing for Creighton. Her dad was a college hoops player, D3 for Concordia in the state of Minnesota. So many of those athletic families. Couple touches, turning. Hernandez, who's been dynamic here in the second half with her left foot back across, trying to find Farkas. It'll pop in. Sent back across the other way by DeVecchi. And it'll go out of bounds. Hernandez, Hawkinson, Lofman. Field for the Michigan. And Jennifer Klein loving it. Another Michigan attack. Stratagakis finds Hernandez on this one. Hernandez goes 1v1, tries to find on the wide spot, and then Hernandez again, driving back on defense, great transition defensively, and wins that ball off Tali Ferry. Nikki Hernandez, third team all Big Ten. Last year, eight goals and six assists. This year, four goals and five assists. So two outstanding years for Hernandez. And that's Hernandez on the turn. Hernandez does not look like <laughs> She had to go to overtime to beat Rutgers. She is buzzing out there. That championship mentality. Michigan starting their Big Ten season, going to Happy Valley, beating Penn State, going to Columbus, Ohio, beating Ohio State, and instilling the belief that they could do great things, including winning a Big Ten tournament title. Jennifer Klein talking about matching the intensity. She said that's now a Michigan staple. They play hard. We're seeing that defensive discipline with those two holding mids, four backs, and a big time goalkeeper, and then figure out to find a goal. Always a key, she said, as, as if she was stating the opposite, obvious, but I get what she means. It's not easy to get a goal against Penn State. They did it at Happy Valley, and then they were able to lock down Penn State. So if they can find one, Michigan, Tough to beat. Farkas turns into trouble. Coffee comes back. Now, here comes Penn State going the other way. Talia Ferry off to the races. Talia Ferry gobbling up, gobbling up real estate. Talia Ferry will drop it. Into the 18, Penn State. Side netting, wrong side, as the Nittany Lions fan thought that it was in. Talia Ferry picks this ball up at half, drives, gets some space in between her and Seeley, and then finds Wasserman, who pulled herself out wide a little bit. Wasserman on her left, can't get that on frame. Goes just left of the goal. Great attack by Penn State, though. Phenomenal attack, dropping it to Wasserman, who does have 
one goal in her freshman campaign. You see the Penn State faithful. They were on their feet. They saw the net move, Jackie. They thought it was in, but wrong side. First shot of the half for Penn State. Three for Michigan already. Ten on the day for the Wolverines. Here comes Coffee though. Coffee can change it. And Hillary Beal. Third team, all Big Ten goalkeeper with the save against Coffey. And Penn State has come to life here just like we knew they would, Jackie. They did. That was like two great attacks in the last minute from Penn State. Talia Ferry again, Shepard with the shield and Beal. So Dennis has come up with a couple saves and now Hillary Beal with the save. Talia Ferry here tries to find out on the right. Hillary Beal does a great job to come off her line, take away that near post and deny Sam Coffey. One more look at this attack by Penn State. Sam Coffey finds herself right at the right of the six. Hillary Beal, such a good job to come out and deny her. Gets herself big, gets low to the ground. It's not easy for a goalkeeper to get that low. Great job by Hillary Beal. So the word is Sarah Stratagakis is going to try to get back in there for Michigan. It's rare for her to be subbed out, but Stratagakis. I can't argue with either one of these coaches. The job they've done, Erica Dombach. For Penn State and Jennifer Klein for Michigan. So just a warning, no card. Ellie Jean has the ball. Hawkinson comes through her. A little bit late, a little bit too much from Hawkins in there and that Hawkins and Jean battle looks similar to the Tierney Wiltshire Hawkins and battle from Friday. Both teams thought the ball was out of bounds. They'll play on. Martin, turnover. Have a risky pass there for Martin. The return looking to find Jordan Caniff a little bit too deep. So there is Stratagakis. What is that collision we just saw? Devecki gets Swero get up into that bomb. Surprised that that was a no call. Actually, Swero gets up, tries to head this ball. Devecki comes straight through into Swero. Battles going on all over the field in this championship game. This second half is flying along too. Just. 18 minutes and 20 seconds remaining. And we are now seeing out of Penn State what Erica Dombach called for when we interviewed her right before the start of the second half, that urgency to push it because it wasn't there, as you so astutely said earlier, Jackie. It was all Michigan, but right now Penn State putting passes together, being dangerous, and making Hillary Beal make some big-time saves. Here's Gene cutting in. Gene loves to hit it with a right foot. Now back over to Coffee. Coffee. We'll bring it back. Dyke will reset. We'll try again. Kaylee Rio, who's now the all-time minutes leader in the history of NCAA Division I women's soccer. Look at the shots here now. Ten for Michigan, nine for Penn State. As we told you to start, two outstanding teams evenly matched. Flag is up offside. And a bellow. Not happy with the call. She might have a legit, legitimate argument there because I, it looked tight. I agree with that. There's Ann Cook, longtime assistant. Tim Wassel. There's never been a conversation for any game we've had where Erica Dombach hasn't mentioned her coaching staff. Penn State. Try to make another change is Devin Olive, a freshman who we've not seen yet this weekend. Going to get a run as Penn State trying to find the right combination. Talia Ferry starting to do a whole lot. Wasserman out wide. Canna looking to square it back. Michigan was ready. Sheely was there. 
Now Swear, right back to Caniff. Caniff, two white jerseys. Cooper comes over in support. Jordan Caniff with the throw in. So Devin Olive gonna come on for Carrie Abello. Abello was subbed out in the first half as well. Kind of like Stratagakis, you don't always see Abello on the bench as Erica Dombach has referenced the idea of cloning her because she can play left back, left mid, left forward. Caniff, Talia Ferry. Spin from Wasserman. Knocked out of there. Yeka will try to get into the game. Yeah. Next opportunity for Jennifer Klein. That's deflected, and it's going to be a corner kick. So it's going to be time for some coffee here as coffee drives such a great ball on corner kicks both sides. State fans looking on. Coffee. They go short. Talia Ferry. Talia Ferry trying to juke. Talia Ferry. Back over to Coffee. Coffee finds some space. And that won't work for Sam Coffee as we. What a one two punch these two are. Fancy forward by Talia Ferry to drive end line. And then finds Coffee at the top of the box. Coffee gets it on her left. Can't get that on frame. Sam Coffee, her father, Wayne Coffee, a big time author. He wrote the book When Nobody Was Watching with Carly Lloyd and then introduced Carly Lloyd to Samantha Coffee. They actually trained together. And of course, Carly Lloyd is legendary for the work she did with James Galanis. Her off-season training is ridiculous. I think you probably witnessed it, right? Did you play with Carly Lloyd a little bit at the Red Stars? No, uh, we didn't cross over at the Red Stars, no. But you heard about it. You know how hard she trains in the off-season. And the name of the book is When Nobody Was Watching, written by Sam Coffey. He also wrote the book The Closer, about Mariana Rivera. Cutting inside, shot right to Dennis. I think Emma Cooper wants this one back. Seely finds her at the top of the box, takes a great first touch in towards goal, but fires this right at Amanda Dennis. It's a great first touch to set herself up at the top of the box. One of the better opportunities we've seen in this game so far. Emma Cooper has scored a goal this season, was looking for her second, denied there by Dennis. 13 minutes, 20 seconds remaining. Kenneth has got Wasserman to the right. Canop's going to take a shot, and it's a good one. Beal got a piece of it, and it'll be a corner kick. Hillary Beal, Jordan Canop had the assist for the first goal on Friday and almost had the first goal here. Canop has been doing work on this right side. Fires this on net. Hillary Beal does a good job to get this up and over, but Canop has been busy in the last 10 minutes or so for Penn State. Canop. One goal and one assist on the season. Let's take another look. Well done by Beal. Caniff, though, with that great shot at the top. She's been getting an end line. She's earned a couple corners for this Penn State side. Coffee. A lot of traffic in front of Beal. Cleared out of there by Lofman. It'll give Coffee another chance, though. Quick touch to Caniff. She'll send it back in. Ooh, there's a knock to the head. A Penn State player goes down. We'll have to take a look at that again as Penn State still with it. Wasserman, Penn State looking clean here. They took a lot of punches from Michigan. Now they're starting to punch back. Wasserman deals. Here's that collision with Hayslip and Anderson. And Hayslip tries to go in the way of Anderson, just didn't see her coming.
feels like something's about to happen. It, it does, <laughs> yeah. You, uh, Jackie, that is so amazing you said that. I was just going to say the same thing. You can feel the excitement of the crowd, the fans know it, the coaches know it, the benches know it. Alongside Jackie Manny, I'm Dean Linky, your sack field, Piscataway, home of the Rutgers men's and women's soccer teams, and your great host of the 2019 Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament. It's the championship game between Jennifer Klein's Michigan Wolverines, the three seed, and Erica Dombach's four seed Penn State. Jennifer Klein making another sub. 11 minutes remaining here in regulation. Swero. Coming back the other way, little turnover, Hernandez! Oh, what a save! How did Amanda Dennis get down to that? It's a BTN standout presented by Auto Owners Insurance. What a save. Hernandez strips Hayslip here at the top of the box and then gets it on her right. Amanda Dennis, though, dives down and low to her right side to deny Nikki Hernandez. Great individual effort by Hernandez here. And that ball, it looks like it's going into the back of the net if Dennis doesn't get across the goal there. Dennis will watch that one roll out of bounds. Nikki. Amanda Dennis, the senior from San Diego, big time save. Nikki Hernandez has been all over the field today. Wins this ball, quickly goes at goal, tries to get that ball low into the left, but Amanda Dennis, huge save to keep this game 0-0. You think about the fact Jordan Bloomer, Big Ten Goalkeeper of the Year, Megan McClellan, second team all Big Ten, gave up that goal where it looked like she lost it on the shot from Jade Rivera on Friday. Hillary Beal in the net for Michigan. I mean, Amanda Dennis not recognized, and she's one of the best goalkeepers in the Big Ten, if not the country, wearing the two zeros. We talked about it on Friday about how great the goalkeeping is in the Big Ten Conference and you're right I mean between her and and the back line that she plays behind the defense for Penn State has been fantastic this year. Some more changes for Penn State as Ali Schlegel the Big Ten freshman of the year with those 12 goals including her 12th on Friday back into the game. Peyton Linehan into the game and Carrie Abello into the game. Here's that reaction from Hernandez after that shot just a moment ago. She has been pretty big time for this Michigan side. Two shots today, 46 shots heading into this game for Hernandez, who has shown the versatility to play anywhere for Jennifer Klein. moment the clock has stopped with 824 remaining here in the second half. Martin over the ball sent in. Three blue jerseys there headed out by the all-time minutes leader in the history of NCAA women's soccer real Kaylee real one back here by Hawkinson Hawkinson good ball into space turning Muffin and Yucca is there and Michigan has a one nothing lead Oh, wait. Now the referee offside. Oh, my. And that says it all from the fans right there. Michigan was celebrating. The fans were celebrating. Even the referee, I think, had signaled. And then he turned around and said, hang on. What a sequence here, but here we see Lofman plays this ball in. You own see goal. Yucca. That well, was an own goal. Yucca was there, but it was knocked in by Penn State, so that might be part of the reason as well. It's an own goal, and it's Michigan 1, Penn State 0.
Great build up by Michigan. Hernandez again out in the wide space. Hawkinson gets the center feet, drives towards the middle, and Lofman turns, finds this ball, the back post for Yeka. Lofman again here with her left foot, plays this in. And Yeka's at the back post. That's Linehan sliding in. It's Linehan's foot. That goes though, off of Linehan's foot, you're right. We'll get one more look here. Erica Dombach wants an explanation. Sergio Gonzalez, the referee. confirmation on whether they're going to give the goal to Yeka or if they're going to call it an own goal. At the moment, they are saying goal for Yeka, assisted by Stratagakis. It is not a reviewable play, as Chris Masters from the Big Ten telling us that it is not a play that is reviewable, so it's going to count, and it's one nothing Michigan. Let's take a look at it one more time. And it, I think that goes right off of Linehan's foot. Yep. yep. There it is. Right off of Linehan's foot into the back of the goal. Erica Dombach, not happy because if they're claiming offside, it doesn't matter, I believe, whether it's an own goal or not because the offside still affects the play. But nonetheless, they had a discussion, and it sounds like Sergio Gonzalez may have said, you know what, I didn't see it as offside no matter what. And as we clearly saw, it went off of Linehan. Sergio Gonzalez also realizing it's not a reviewable play as far as pulling it back. They've called it a goal. And let's look one more time at the play. And it's Lofman, not Stratagakis. As they list in the official stats, Stratagakis, but it was Lofman that'll get the assist. They're still saying Yeka, but that's not right. It's an own goal, right? No, it's an own goal for sure. And they're arguing about it being offside, but Syriac is offside. Even though she doesn't touch it, she still has, a, she is still is a factor in the plane. I think she. That's probably what Dombach is saying. I think that's what she's arguing is that Linehan was there because Yeko was on that line. And I think if she's not on that line offside, Linehan might be in a different position. I think she still affects the play. They are officially changing it to an own goal now. So the official stats also have it right. Penn State, Talia Ferry, little bump by Martin. Michigan with a one nothing lead. Seven minutes and change remaining, and I think they're gonna point to the spot. The Penn State player goes down, and Sergio Gonzalez, after a long talk with Erica Dombach, there's contact, Talia Ferry, and a penalty kick's gonna be called. Talia Ferry. Gets around Anderson, and then Anderson drops to ground here. I think that's fair. She comes through Talia Ferry, doesn't get much of the ball. Talia Ferry ends up on the ground. So Skylar Anderson getting the start because the two outside backs are out. And now Coffee can tie this one up. And we may have two goals within the span of a minute right here. There's the whistle. Hillary Beal, ready, deep breath, coffee. And coffee goes high, and it's tied at one. I love 
this by Sam Coffey. We saw her go to the same side on Friday night, but this time she lifts it. Hillary Beal knows she's going in that direction, so Sam Coffey gets it up off the air. Friday, we saw her keep it low. Here we see her go high, same side. It's her eighth goal of the season. Great finish by Sam Coffey. What a crazy two minutes. It looked like perhaps offside the other way, ruled an own goal, and then Penn State comes right back. Feel bad for Anderson taking down Talia Ferry, but Sergio Gonzalez had a good look at it. It was a no-doubter, pointed right to the spot. And then Sam Coffey, as we mentioned, her dad and author wrote the book, The Closer. And Sam Coffey, in fact, is a big-time closer <laughs> as she ties this one at one. Sam telling us she actually got to go to Mariano Rivero's house and meet him as well. And her entire family's in sports. Her sister is now covering the Oakland A's for the Athletic. And here's Coffey. Coffey. Looking to try to do it all by herself. She'll earn the corner kick. Corner kick, Penn State. Sam Coffey. Coffee, high, looping ball. Looking for real. Yaka. We'll headed out, but it'll be another corner kick other side, and that means Sam Coffee will run all the way over to the other side as Michigan still trying to get a player in. Emma Cooper, next opportunity. And 80 minutes without a goal, and we've got one for each here, and now with just five minutes and change remaining, Penn State looking to take the lead. Coffee again, driven in. Beal back passes. Coffee almost put that in on her own. And a whistle as Beal was backpedaling. Knocked it out of bounds. It looks like a push there, and it'll stay with Michigan. Pretty sure before all of that happened, Jackie Manny said on the air, feels like something's going to happen. <laughs> I think that was your quote. Or pretty close to it. I said it right before you were thinking it. You could feel the energy, kind of a shift in that. You know what? It doesn't matter if it's Sunday and if people are tired. It's go time. Handball caught against Lockman. It'll come back to Penn State. Yaka, good minutes in the first half, good in the second. Stratagakis runs right into Dyke. Dyke, Stratagakis still slow to get up. Coffee out wide. Here come the Nittany Lions, dancing with it. Bello earns the corner kick. Corner kick, Penn State. Corner kick, Coffee. Off the head of Martin, hanging around. Still loose, still loose. And Dyke turns on it, it'll go out of bounds, it'll come back to Beal as we've got three minutes remaining in this one. We can remind everybody that the Big Ten Field Hockey Championship featuring Iowa and Penn State will join that right after the conclusion of this game, but you can find it on the Fox Sports app at the top of the hour as well. Go, 
Hillary Beal. Another whistle here. Another opportunity for Penn State to get blue jerseys. Jackie in the box as we've now just had a little over two minutes remaining in regulation with the game tied at one. I think we've seen it tilt more towards Penn State in these last five minutes or so. Tons of corner kick. They're finally getting in those wide spaces, getting end line, creating opportunities. You see Sam Coffey whip this ball in towards the back of the six. Coffee, Beal punches it. It's taken down. That was, I think Schlegel yeah, crashing in there. That was a big collision by Schlegel and Beal. Big 10 freshman of the year, Ali Schlegel. Ball gets bent in. Schlegel trying to run on to it. Beal does a great job to get up and punch this ball in. And both of them don't really see each other going for ball. And Schlegel and Beal just go straight into each other. Schlegel comes from a big time football family. Her dad, Mike, was the captain at the University of Kentucky, a former tackle. And her brother, Drew, walked on to the Kentucky football team. Last year, Kentucky played Penn State in the Citrus Bowl. Kentucky won. After the game, Drew received a scholarship for his final year as a Kentucky Wildcat. After beating Allie Schlegel's Penn State Nittany Lions, she said it was the only time in her time at Penn State where she rooted against the Penn State Nittany Lions for obvious reasons. Another clip right there as... Penn State player goes down, and are we going to see a card here? Is a little trip there from Devecki. No One card. Both coaches second. talking to Sergio Gonzalez. Schlegel. Jadagakis, one back by Dyke. Kelly Afari. Looking for Schlegel. Schlegel. Right to Beal. Schlegel telling me her family is in Kentucky for the Kentucky football game, watching on BTN. As Schlegel grew up in Colorado, did everything outdoors, hunting, fishing, all of it. Nine, Play a little football eight, as well. It looks like overtime six, soccer five, bonus four, coverage here three, on BTN two, Championship Sunday. One, two, and how about that? Through 90 minutes, Penn State and Michigan tied at one. Uh, this whole game has been so fun and exciting to watch. I thought Michigan did a great job coming out of halftime and really taking it to Penn State. And then Penn State, like you said, found themselves and were able to get themselves back in this game. And since then, it's just been an all-out battle. They earned the penalty kick. Sam Coffey with the equalizer. And Jennifer Klein in her second year as the head coach of Michigan. The new kids on the block being dangerous. 90 minutes, not enough. Featuring these two great teams. Jennifer Klein's Michigan Wolverines and the Penn State Nittany Lions tied at one through 90 overtime when we return on the Big Ten Network. Welcome back to Yersack Field, Piscataway, New Jersey, as we take a look at the Discover Tournament bracket for the 2019 Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament. And it's not complete yet, as we'll have overtime soccer, Penn State and Michigan tied at one. What a tournament it has been this far between Friday and today. Tons of exciting goals, tons of excitement all over the field. And here it is. Michigan's goal, Lofman finds Sirayeka, but Linehan driving back gets a foot on this and it ends up being an own goal. Michigan though, with that great run from Sirayeka at the back post. There in case, 
Talia Ferry then just a couple minutes later gets fouled by Skylar Anderson. Goes to the PK. Sam Coffey again steps up. Goes to that same side. This time lifts it in the air up past Beal. Great finish by Sam Coffey. Tied at one and... You look at the stats, look at the shots here. 16 for Penn State. At one point, they only had one in the first 15 minutes of the second half, but then tons of shots late in the second half. 16 shots for Penn State, 13 for Michigan. Reminding you about what happens in overtime. It is set up with two 10-minute overtimes, but it is sudden victory. If you score, you win, and you are the Big Ten Tournament champion. If Nobody scores through those 10 minutes. They'll go to PKs like they did last year when Minnesota beat Penn State to advance to the NCAA tournament. Plenty of drama going on in this championship game. Don't forget that coming up next, a champion will be crowned in the 2019 Big Ten Field Hockey Tournament. That's coming up next on BTN and is available right now on the Fox Sports app. Dan Kelly and Kara Lentz on the call from Happy Valley. The Iowa Hawkeyes and the Penn State Nittany Lions. Congratulations to Lisa Salucci, the Big Ten Coach of the Year in field hockey. Great season for Iowa and Penn State turning it on at the right time at home. So Penn State looking for a Big Ten title in women's soccer and field hockey on the same day. Amanda Dennis. And Hillary Beal makes sense to show them because they could feature if we can't find a goal here in these two 10 minute overtime periods. Alongside Jackie Manny, Dean Linky with you. The Big 10 Network Championship Sunday. Women's soccer and field hockey. Big 10 men's soccer tournament starts today. Michigan and Michigan State will follow on the men's soccer side, that Iowa Penn State field hockey game. Great day to be with you on the Big Ten Network. As you see, Gene, just one less game and a few minutes shy of Kaylee Reels, now all time minutes record. Not just at Penn State, not just in the Big Ten, but in the country. So Jackie Manny, Chris Masters, who's with the Big Ten, does such a great job promoting women's soccer and softball. Here's a bellow. A bellow! And Bio is there. During the break, I know he was able to come in and talk to you a little bit. What did he have to say about uh, what that decision was? With the um, with the offside call for that Michigan goal, it was that the defender. Sorry, the attacker, Sarayaka, didn't have a direct effect on the goal, which is why that offside call did not stand. All right, that's the official breakdown, which is kind of what we said. However, it still looked like she did have an effect on it. That's the only troubling part about it, right? Exactly, and that's why Erica Dombach was so upset, I think, is because when you're that close, everybody's in the box. Bello. Bello, good little turn, cross back. Now Michigan will go the other way with Emma Cooper. Emma Cooper's got Suero in front of her. Showing is Hernandez. Hernandez. Stratagakis is in front, Lofman will use Hawkinson. Hawkinson, Stratagakis was open and she's on side. They'll give it back to Lofman. It was Lofman's ball in that earned that first goal, Stratagakis. Trying to head it down, almost got it. Man, you could see that entire play develop and it ended up just like we thought it would with Stratagakis, the ball at her head. What a build up, like you said, from Michigan. Lofman ends up all the way on this right side, gets a great ball in. Sarah Stratagakis with that perfect near post run and just can't get herself squared up on goal. And I, hands on the head, it's that time, you're in overtime, you're tired, you want that game winning goal. What a buildup by Michigan to create that, though. The Canadian Sarah Stratagakis, they drop it over. The flag is down. Beal is out. The chip at Penn State is your 2019 Big Ten Tournament. Champ Slinahan with the game winner. That is the game of soccer. 
right there. You miss on one end, you pay for it on the other. We saw that big time Sarah Stratagakis opportunity and then right down immediately after Penn State comes back and puts that ball away. What a finish by Peyton Linehan. Sixth goal of the season for Peyton Linehan in the eighth Big Ten Tournament Championship in Penn State program history. Linehan gonna get the shoes shined as Linehan, the hero over Michigan, taking that long pass, the freshman from Douglas, Mass. And then the heartache for Skylar Anderson called for that PK. The pain for Michigan, the thrill of victory for Linehan and Penn State. Michigan was a little bit stunned by that. You could see them just frozen on the sideline. I thought they were fantastic in today's game. What a battle between these two teams. Allie Schlegel, the Big Ten Freshman of the Year. First team all Big Ten, Aliyah Martin. And make no mistake, the goal from Peyton Linehan is a BTN standout presented by Auto Owners Insurance. The perfect ball in from Talia Ferry. Linehan sees that Beal is coming at her off of her line, just gets her foot under this, lifts this up and over Beal and into the back of the net. What a finish by Peyton Linehan. That set it all. Ann Cook with her hands in the air and the Penn State bench erupting. Saw Jennifer Klein there looking on. The smile of approval from Erica Dombach. Eighth Big Ten tournament title for the Penn State Nittany Lions. A perennial power. And the trophy belongs to the Nittany Lions. All season long, we've talked about kind of the adversity that they had to get through. And what a streak they had closing their season off. Well done by Penn State. Celebration time for the Penn State Nittany Lions. I want to thank all the great folks with the Big Ten Conference and the Big Ten Network, the wonderful SIDs and the researchers. It's been a magical season that's not over. Penn State can make a long run in the NCAA tournament. Michigan can make a long run. Wisconsin, Iowa, Rutgers, look out in the NCAA tournament. But right now, though, Kaylee Rio owns the trophy. They win the 2019 Big Ten Tournament Championship. Up next, a field hockey tournament title on the line.